Daytona Beach, Florida, home to Hangsters, Hot Rods, Muscle Car, and Collector Car Showroom. America's number one choice for premier collector cars for over 30 years. We have an awesome piece of inventory to present to you today. It is a Hangster certified unit, and it is a 1973 Dodge Challenger. Finally, a Mopar. So let's check it out. <clears throat> and a pretty cool Mopar it is. First of all, 340 on the air cleaner, uh, because it is a numbers matching 340 car. It does have the fender tag. We will have a photo of the fender tag on our website for you to break down. The black contraption mounted to the driver's side firewall is your power brake booster. The vehicle is equipped with power brakes. Buried down there on the uh, driver's side of the block, front of the block, is your power steering reservoir because the car is equipped with power steering. And this goofy contraption here on the front of the motor that is your AC compressor. And yes, it does work. That is a unit that we just had rebuilt here in Daytona. Uh, so it is all brand new, fresh, and it does blow cold. <coughs> so a pretty desirable color combination we have going on here. Exterior, red and black, interior white. Um, the paint on the top of the hood and the fenders is really, really nice on the car. Uh, 340 car badged on the hood scoop, um, RT on the hood scoop, the uh, paint again on the top of the fenders, uh, top of the hood in really, really nice condition. Your uh, front bumper also in nice condition. Challenger in the grill, headlight bezels, the chrome clarity around the headlight bezels in real nice condition. Down on the lower valance where you'll find your uh, turn signal indicators. Uh, the paint down there is in good shape. Down the side of the car, uh, your black uh, striping, all in real nice shape. So it, on the hood and on the uh, side of the car, it's like a matte black, so it's not like a gloss black. Uh, and your uh, paint on the front fender is fantastic. Uh, no uh, blisters, bubbles, cracks, anything going on around the wheel opening. Uh, your Mopar wheels in nice shape. Beauty rings look good. Uh, the raised white leather tires are brand new. The car has an awesome uh, set of dual chrome mirrors on it, so that gives the car a nice aesthetic as well. How about the front windshield? The clarity is in fantastic condition. The chrome is in real, real nice shape. You can see through to the front dash there. Uh, the, 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 the dash is in nice condition. Uh, paint on the roof, also in real nice shape. Uh, no clear coat fade, no blisters, bubbles, cracks, anything like that going on. Glass clarity on the driver's side door glass, in pretty good shape. It does have your faint scratching, which is typical of a car of this age, but uh, nonetheless, it's not uh, you know, he real heavy or uh, real deep, um, and your quarter window is in nice shape. Body lines on the car are fantastic. Notice the line here on the fender door, quarter, everything lines up nice and straight. Uh, real nice straight body lines on both the driver and passenger side of the car. And the uh, driver's door, the paint condition, awesome. Drip barrel moldings look good on the car. Let's take a look at the interior. Door panel. Uh, door panel's in real nice shape. You know, you have that white, um, it, it's, it's in real nice shape on the interior of this car, both the plastic and the vinyl. Uh, so let's take a look in the back seat here quickly. Uh, black vinyl in the back, uh, black vinyl, white vinyl in the back, black carpeting, black headliner, that's what I was you know, wanting to say. So the car has a great color combination inside and out. Um, the, the white in the back seat are in real nice condition, not only from the standpoint of not being ripped or torn or anything like that, but also from the... Uh, you know, the, that white has a tendency uh, in, in these style of cars to want to fade or discolor over time. Now, it is a tad bit discolored on the driver's seat, uh, but not bad whatsoever. There is a small tear there um, on the driver's seat uh, right in the seam. Uh, but uh, that's about it as far as imperfections, as far as the uh, driver's side is concerned. Now, uh, it is a center console car, automatic. Challenger floor mats in real nice shape. Underneath the carpeting like brand new. Uh, again, the dash uh, we'll take a look at on the test drive, but the wood grain in the uh, 
around your bezels uh, in your uh, dash clarity. Bezel clarity looks to be in nice shape. The uh, dome light is illuminating when we open up the driver door. So let's continue. Uh, so check out the door fitment to your rear quarter and then uh, look at the paint condition on the rear quarter itself. There's no uh, paint issues as far as any kind of uh, spider webbing, blistering, bubbling, cracking, anything like that going on. Uh, clarity out of the uh, rear window, also pretty good. Uh, your chrome around the uh, rear window in nice shape. You can see through to the uh, rear of the seat top there, your uh, seat's not torn or sun faded or dry rotted or anything like that. Uh, the deck lid, not only does it fit nice to both the driver and passenger side rear quarters, but also uh, the paint clarity, uh, really nice. The uh, red, not bubbled, blistered, cracked, anything like that. Uh, chrome clarity on the rear of the car. Uh, the bumpers, uh, both front and rear, are really nice. Your uh, dual tips there that come out um, underneath the uh, driver and passenger side of the lower valance for your dual exhaust. Uh, the Dodge lettering in the center of the uh, rear here uh, beneath the uh, trunk access is in nice condition. Let's take a look in the trunk. Car cover, you can have it. I've got probably 30 of them, if not more than that. Uh, so we'll leave that in there. It does have a uh, small spare and a jack. Or there's a breaker bar. I'm assuming there's a jack underneath there. There may or may not be. Well, the breaker bar is there. I do not see the jack, so. Uh, the, oh, there's jack, duh. Didn't look that far. So uh, Jack is in there. Now let's see if I can get this trunk mat. There's your uh, trunk mat, or trunk pan, I guess I should say. And then, you know, you got, looks like some air shocks. There's your fill for your air shocks there. So we are in good, good shape in the trunk. Jack, spare, breaker bar, and a free car cover. No additional charge. Passenger side. Again, your uh, body line's fantastic on the car. Uh, fuel door's in great shape. Chrome on the uh, fuel door's good. Uh, the RT striping down the side of the uh, passenger side of the vehicle, real nice shape, door, fender, quarter. Uh, all your chrome around your wheel opening moldings are in nice shape. You can, uh, the wheels look newer. <clears throat> there is no restoration history on this car. Uh, that we can present to you. I don't know when it was painted, when the motor was rebuilt, tranny was rebuilt, anything like that. I can tell you when the tires were put on and I can tell you when the AC compressor was rebuilt because we did both. Passenger side, once again, the door panel, passenger seat, uh, center console, dash, all in real, real nice condition. Uh, hopefully you can see not only in this video presentation but also in the still photos on our website uh, the higher quality and condition of this car. It's a turnkey car, ready to go, doesn't need paint work, doesn't need mechanical work. It's been through our certification process, so uh, it's ready for the spring and summer car shows. <coughs> and it's a Mopar. I get all the time, why don't you have more Mopar? Well, <laughs> they're hard to buy and find. The uh, passenger side door, real nice. Check out the paint down low there on the passenger side door. There's uh, no issues as far as blistering, bubbling, cracking. Same thing on the front fender. No issues high or low. Uh, it's a driver quality car, but let me tell you something. Real, real nice paint on the car. Real nice interior condition. The car runs fantastic. <clears throat> so that's uh, it in a nutshell. Our Dodge Challenger with uh, numbers matching 340 and uh, steering brakes and air and a fender tag. Let's put it up in here and check out the undercarriage and then after that we'll do a drive. I want to encourage you to visit our showroom to check out whichever vehicle you are interested in in person. We will gladly pull the car outside for you and check out the paint condition and quality out in the natural lighting. 
We'll put the car in the air for you like we're going to do here momentarily. You can check out the floor pans, the uh, tire condition, the bottom of the motor, the transmission, the suspension components. We'll let you drive the car. You can see how it starts, how it steers, how it accelerates, um, how it handles, rides, sounds. This way, if there's anything uh, that you don't necessarily care for about the car, you will know because you were here and you went over it for yourself. We try to disclose in a 20 to 25 minute video presentation, not only everything we know about the car, but offer uh, <clears throat> you know, full disclosure and transparency on the condition and the quality of each vehicle. Uh, we do this because we are an internet-based business and we've been in the internet-based business a long time, selling 30, 40, 50 year old cars sight unseen. So hopefully our longevity in this business tells you something about our business model and the kind of quality and quantity of product we put through our showrooms month after month and year after year. But as fun as this business is, as this hobby is, you know, they're old cars. It's just like a boat or an RV, you know, unexpected things happen. It's part of owning one of these classic cars. So be prepared for that. Um, and when you are here at our showroom, you know, we'll explain some of that to you and go over some of the expectations you can have with not only buying a classic car, but owning a classic car. If you're already familiar and you like what you see, then by all means, we'll uh, take your money and send you a car. That's not an issue. But uh, if you're a more specific or particular buyer, I do encourage you to visit our showroom in person. Or if you've never owned a classic car before, let us explain to you what you might be able to expect. Let's put our 73 Challenger up in the air. We'll take it on a test drive and then we'll show you how it runs out. Underneath our 1973 numbers matching 340 Dodge Challenger, you have disc brakes up front. Unfortunately, we are not gonna be able to get our camera up there to show you the numbers matching motor and the uh, date code, which is September of 72. Uh, September, I'm looking at it right now, September 25th, 1972. So we will get pictures of that um, so that you can see it on our website. Um, the oil pan, from what I can see, looks to be dry at this time. Can't really see the front seal cross members in the way here, so you can't really get a good shot of it. You can, however, get great shots of both the transmission pan and the exhaust system. So let's start with the exhaust system. It is exhaust manifolds on driver and passenger side coming into a set of dual pipes and then dual mufflers. Uh, and the uh, dual tips there that we showed you in the walk around presentation. The tranny pan looks dry at this time. <clears throat> your speedo cable, your tail shaft seal. I point out those areas because the trans pan, speedo cable, and uh, tail shaft seal are generally the three most common areas a tranny is going to leak if it's going to leak. So, frame rails. Uh, and floor pans in the car are absolutely fantastic. Uh, you can see here uh, the car sitting on our lift suspended in the air uh, by its frame rail torque box area here. The cross member supporting up the transmissions in nice shape. No holes there that are not supposed to be there. The e-brake is hooked up and functioning. The floor pan on the driver's side all one solid piece, nothing uh, sectioned or uh, siliconed, patched. And it's the same on the passenger side. Back to our exhaust system real fast. Uh, the pipes all the way back, no rust holes, rot holes, pin holes. Uh, Flowmaster mufflers. Drum brakes in the rear. Uh, the tires on the vehicle are brand new. We put them on there. The other ones were a little uh, too old for uh, resale. <clears throat> Pretty awesome car so far. Uh, we're going to drop it down on the ground and take it out on a test drive. Before we do that, let's discuss our payment options. If you're a cash buyer, cashier's check from your bank, bank wire transfer. If you're financing the collector car lenders we work with, we'll do 5 to 15 year loans on these cars, 10% down of the purchase price and the remaining balance over that five to 15 year period, whatever you uh, get approved for. That is between you and the lender. We have no say in that. Uh, it's up to the lender uh, to provide you with your term, your rate, and your monthly payment. 
If you like what you hear, you can call us back and we can start the uh, whole uh, process of, of selling you the car. Once the vehicle is paid in full, we put the vehicle through a pre-delivery inspection. This process is recorded and you get a copy of that on the keychain when the car arrives. It's on a little USB thumb drive with the photos that we took of the car in the showroom, this video presentation you're watching right now, and then our pre-delivery inspection video. <clears throat> They're old cars. Anything can happen. Anything can start leaking, stop working at any given moment. Therefore, we put the car through one last shakedown prior to the vehicle leaving our facility and heading your direction. Once it's through inspection, it goes through detail, and then a carrier is dispatched if we are the ones handling the shipping. We can typically have a truck here within a 48-hour time period. However, if you're in a more difficult destination or you're on the West Coast, uh, allow us four, five, six business days. But I do promise you we will get a carrier here as soon as we possibly can. We work pretty quickly once we're funded. Uh, it's inspection, detail, dispatched, and then gone. And of course, if you are picking up the car yourself or you made arrangements with your own carrier, we'll let you know when it's ready and you can come get it or send for it. Let's set our 73 Dodge Challenger down on the ground. Take it out on a test drive and show you how the car runs. Inside our 73 Challenger wipers. Uh, let's see, turn signals, driver's side, passenger side. Uh, 88,230 is the miles on the odometer. Title reads exempt, true miles unknown. Uh, the tack does work, however, it's not accurate. As you can see, it's at 3,3200 RPM right now, so it moves, but uh, it's not accurate. Uh, fuel gauge does work, uh, temp, alternator, all that stuff works. The clock's ticking, your radio works. And most importantly, our AC. Not sure if you guys can hear the fan on that, but it is working. It's not cold yet, so let's give it a second to make sure it is cold. And there it is, it's cold. Awesome. So you got cold air in your 73 Challenger. Did I do the horn yet? Horn works. Uh, headliner's in good shape in the car. Dash pad center console seem to be in nice condition. The car idles real, real nice. Let's take it on a drive. The car runs really nice, speedo's working. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, the steering in the car seems to be nice and tight. Uh, the car handles, rides very nice. Uh, no tire vibration, engine vibration, anything like that going on. Nice smooth ride in the car. The car tracks nicely. The uh, 340 strong. car is tight. That's 55 miles an hour. This car is nice and tight up front. The car has a nice sound to it as far as the exhaust is concerned. Let's test our brakes here. Look at that. I should have checked behind me first. Luckily there was nobody there. Or like some dingbat just stopping for no apparent reason right in the middle of the road. Real, real nice, smooth uh, brakes on the car. Not, uh, you don't have to stand on them to make the car stop. Our temp's good. The car's not overheating, running nice and cool. Okay, let's get around the uh, Ford uh, Exploder here. Transmission shifts nice and smooth. Car's nice and tight at 65 miles an hour. No problem getting there. Now I have to brake because this person in front of me is, well, they're changing lanes now, so that's cool. Nice tight car though, runs well. No popping through the exhaust. No stumble upon acceleration. Nice tight ride at 50 miles an hour get over here. I don't trust those small little mirrors. I drive a big truck, so I got big mirrors so I can see. 
I don't know how people drove back then with these little tiny mirrors. Awesome piece of equipment here. 1973 numbers matching 340 Dodge Challenger. A Mopar, a great Mopar. By the way, this is not a true RT car either. It's just striped as a true RT. I don't even think they made RTs in 73, but uh, it is not a true RT car, so. Awesome piece of equipment. Like I said, numbers matching 340 with steering brakes, a fender tag, and AC, and a functioning radio, and the car runs absolutely fantastic. And no paint issues, brand new wheels, brand new tires, awesome. And it is available for sale here at Hankster's Hot Rods in Daytona Beach at a very reasonable price point. That, at full retail price, includes shipping in the lower 48 United States on an enclosed carrier, as well as a powertrain warranty that covers the engine, the transmission, and the rear end. If the AC stops blowing cold, is that covered? It is not. Neither is an oil pan gasket leak, tranny pan gasket leak, brakes, batteries. It is just the internal components of the drivetrain. Is the price of this car negotiable? Within reason, it certainly is. We are negotiable on most of, if not all of our cars. But if we negotiate the price point, your luxuries, securities, and conveniences come off, such as the powertrain warranty is void. We give no powertrain warranty uh, unless it's a full retail price. It literally, you know, as the old saying goes, it's as is. If the car falls in half, you own both pieces. The uh, shipping is included at full retail price um, because it takes time and money to do shipping, to set up the pickup at our showroom, to arrange the delivery at your home or business, to properly vest the driver, make sure they're licensed, bonded, insured, uh, to pay the driver when they pick the car up. And a negotiated cost, you'll handle that legwork on your own. Maybe you are a collector and you have a carrier you've used in the past that you had a good experience with, you're more than welcome to use them. Maybe you have your own trailer. That's cool. Come visit our showroom, shake hands, buy something cool out of our gift shop. Maybe do a little dinner or a late lunch here in Daytona. Lots of cool places to eat on the water. Usually we have beautiful weather. Um, and if you're local to us here in the Sunshine State, drive this Challenger home with your ice cold air conditioning. Hankster's Hot Rods is located in Daytona Beach. And once again, our website is hanksters.com. Check us out.